once again to the Speaking Tree Book Club. Today we are having a wonderful reading by the members of the Speaking Tree Book Club. It's called uh, Refund, a play written by a Hungarian author, Fritz Kalinke. To talk to you more about the author, I would not take much time of yours, but this author is a very, uh, he was a very accomplished uh, journalist, a poet and even a writer. During his journey of writing, he was detected with brain tumor and still he kept on writing and he wrote a book, it has a very funny title called Journey to One's Own Skull and after two years he died. But this play, actually he used grotesque and fantastic, uh, you know, he unveiled the bourgeois uh, stratum of the society and this refund is such a play which is very relevant to today's system of education, I guess. And uh, it's a very hilarious play. I don't want to talk much about the play, but where the play takes a U-turn, I just wanted to uh, tell you that, I won't tell you the story, but uh, there's a student, Satyam and uh, Raj and Ruthu also. There's a student who is unable to find employment even after his studies from school to the university and so on. And he doesn't find anything, I mean, a source of livelihood and he's very upset. On his way he meets a friend called Lederer and he, Lederer uh, is saying that he is a money, a foreign exchange, he is into foreign exchange and uh, he says that I am into Hungarian money and all that, you know. So, uh, Wozikov is a student here. He says that, what is he talking about? It's such a silly, he starts asking uh, silly questions and he says, what is he talking about? He can't understand anything. So the letterer, you know, he gets really angry and he says that you go back to the school or you go back to your school and ask for your refund. Now let's see how the teachers outwit this student. So the student comes to the school after 18 years to ask for the fees back because he could not do anything in his life. There it goes. We had the principal. The principal, Dr. Indira Nityananda. Hi. Should we begin? Get the servant in. We had the servant. I won't say so, and the pew. Miss Rupa Ramamur. Well, what is it? What is it? A man, sir, outside. He wants to see you. I receive parents only during office hours. The particular office hours are posted on the notice board. Tell him that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But it isn't a parent, sir. A pupil? I don't think so. He has a beard. Not a parent and not a pupil? Then what is he? He told me I should just say Kosakov. Hmm. What does he look like? Stupid? Intelligent? Very intelligent, I'd say, sir. Oh, good. Then he's not a school inspector. Show him then. Yes, sir. Was a cop. <coughs> Pavni Bakeli How do you do? <coughs> How do you do? What can I do for you? I'm Vasakov. Don't you remember me? Ah, uh, no. It's possible I've changed. What the hell? Your class records will show I've got a right to come here. The class records? How so? Mr. Principal, if you please, I'm Vasarkov. Doubtless, doubtless. But what has that to do with this? You mean to say you don't even remember my name? No, I imagine you wouldn't. You were probably glad to forget me. Well, Mr. Principal, I was a student in this school 18 years ago. Oh, were you? Well, what do you want now? A certificate? 
since I'm bringing back the leaving certificate you gave me, I suppose I can get along without another one. No, that isn't why I came here. Well? <clears throat> As a former pupil of the school, I want you to refund the tuition fees which were paid to you for my education 18 years ago. What? You want me to refund your tuition fees? Exactly. The tuition fees. If I were a rich man, I'd tell you to keep them, so far as I am concerned. What the hell? But I'm not a rich man and I need the money. Uh, I'm not sure I understand. Damn it! I want my tuition fees back. Is that plain enough? Why do you want it back? Because I didn't get my money's worth. That's why. This certificate here says I got an education. Well, I didn't. I didn't learn anything. I want my money back. But, but, look here, look here. I don't understand it at all. I've never heard of anything like this. What an absurd idea. Absurd, is it? It's a good idea. It's such a good idea that I didn't get it out of my head thanks to the education I got here, which made nothing but an incompetent ass out of me. My old classmate Ledra gave me the idea not half an hour ago. Gave it to you? Like that. Here I was, walking along the street, fired from my last job and wondering how I, was, I could get hold of some cash because I was quite broke. I met Ledra. I said, how goes it Ledra? Fine, he says. I've got to hurry to collect to the brokers to collect the money I made speculating in foreign exchange. I said, what's foreign exchange? He says, I haven't got the time to tell you now, but according to the paper, Hungarian money is down 70 points and I have made the difference. Do you understand? Well, I didn't understand. I said, how can you make money if money goes down? And he says, Vasarkov, if you don't know that, you don't know a damn thing. Go to the school and get your tuition fees back. Then he hurried away and left me standing there. And I said to myself, why shouldn't I do that? He's right. Now that I've thought it over. So I came here as fast as I could and I'll be much obliged if you give me back my tuition fees because they amount to a lot of money and I didn't get anything for them. Really? Really? But now, see here. We've never had a request like yours before. Ledra told you? He's a good friend, Ledra. He told me, and when I get my money back, I'm going to buy him a present. You, 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 you're not really serious, are you? I was never more serious in my life. Treat me wrong here, and I'll go straight to the Ministry of Education and complain about you. You took my money, and you taught me nothing. Now I'm no good for anything. And I can't do the things I should have learned in school. You're mad. My dear sir, her, her, uh, her Wasakov, please go away quietly. I think the matter over after you've gone. No, no. I was, I'm sorry. You don't get rid of me so easy. I'll go when everything's been settled. I was given instruction here in exchange for money so that I might be able to do something. But I can't do anything because I was taught so badly and anybody can see I ought to have my money back. Mm, what makes you think you can't do anything? Everybody thinks so. If I get a job, I can't keep it. Give me an examination and tell me what I ought to do. Call in the masters and let them say. Oh, what a distressing business. How unfortunate. You really want to take another examination? Yes, I have the right to take one. What an unusual case. Oh, I've never heard of anything like this before. Uh, uh, well, I shall have to consult the staff. 
I shall have to call a conference. Uh, uh, will you wait in the waiting room and give me a few minutes? Yes, but be quick. I've got no time to waste. Ask the staff to come here at once. A most extraordinary conference. Yes, sir. Uh, gentlemen, I have asked you to come here on account of a most unusual state of affairs. It is unprecedented. In the 30 years that I've been a schoolmaster, I've never heard anything like that. Smita Sharma. Maths teacher? Never, so long as I live, shall I expect to hear of anything yeah. like it again. Physics teacher? Never, God forbid. It's an unusual state of affairs. Sit down, sit down. I shall open the conference. It is unprecedented, incredible, fantastic. A former pupil has just come to see me, um, 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 an individual named Wasikov. He brought up a question which I've never encountered in my many years of experience. I've never heard of anything like that. Tell us about it. Uh, he wants his tuition fees back. Why? Because he's lost his job? Because he's broke? Because he's an ass? I should be glad to have you express your views on this unparalleled case. Gentlemen, the case is natural. The law of conservation of energy proves that any given pupil will, use, uh, will lose in any given period as much knowledge as a teacher can drill into his head in another period of life duration. There is nothing like it in the history of civilization. It is said the Bourbons learned nothing and forgot nothing. If that is true, the law of energy, the law of conservation of energy. The question is, does he want the amount with simple or compound interest? Because in the latter event, where's the fellow anyhow? He's he's waiting outside. He wants to be re-examined. He says he has learned nothing. He says a re-examination will prove it. I'd like to know what you gentlemen think about it. A re-examination? Gentlemen? Gentlemen, it is my conviction that we shall lose nothing by re-examining Wasakov. If we fail, he will place us in an awkward position. Therefore, he must not fail. He has, shall I say, pursued advanced studies in the school of life. We will not make our questions too difficult. Agreed, gentlemen? We are dealing with a sly, crafty individual who will try to get the better of us and his money back by hook or by crook. We must checkmate him. How? By sticking together. The object is to prevent him from failing because if he fails, he succeeds. That we must stop. If he fails, tomorrow there will be two more former pupils and the next day a dozen. We must back each other up gentlemen, so that this painful affair does not become a pedagogical scandal. He will, uh, we will ask him questions. Whatever his answers, we agree beforehand that they are correct. Who will decide? I, if you will permit me. <coughs> Mr. Principal, let us proceed with the examination. We will show the form of pupil that we too can be shrewd. Isn't there a chance of something going wrong? Suppose it gets into the newspapers? Leave it to us. Please show in her Wasakov. are you? Sit down, you loafers. How dare you? Please, sit down, you loafers. My dear sir, the greeting you have just given us shows that you understand the patriarchal manners which we impress upon everybody in this institution. Exactly as in the days of the medieval Cubanus, 
teachers and pupils meet here on a footing of perfect equality. You have shown us in the most tactful way that you approve of our customs. That is good of you. And I am sure my colleagues will agree that the pupil was a cop who appears before us for re-examination need not be examined in what apparent take to gentlemanliness. Instead, we waive examination in that subject and mark him excellent. Quite right, quite right. Manners, excellent. Agreed. Agreed. All right, if you say so. What the hell? I don't give a damn for the lot of you. My being gentlemanly isn't going to pass this examination. Let me fail as quickly as possible and give me my money. Everything else is just damn nonsense. Uh, speaking for the staff, we agree with you. Your exquisite courtesy will not affect us one way or the other. We will examine you and will be guided entirely by your replies to our questions. Take no notice of that. All right, carry on. Let's clear the questions. I need money. Go to it. Ask me questions. Professors. I mean long-eared asses. I'd like to see you get a single correct answer out of me. The examination will begin now. History. Herr Schweffler. Herr Wasserkopf, won't you be seated? To hell with the seat. I'll stand. Bravo. Excellent. Her Wasikov wishes us to understand two things. He will dispense with a formal written examination and will answer only. Good. He will not be seated. He will stand. Also, it follows that his physical condition is splendid. And I take it upon myself to award him an excellent in physical culture. I ask the principal, who teaches that subject to conquer? Quite right. Physical culture. Excellent. Agreed. 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 No. You got me once, didn't you? Well, you won't do it again. From now on, I'll have my ears open. Alertness. Very good. Perseverance. Unusual. Logic. Excellent. Get on with your questions. Uh, ambition. Boundless. Yes, yes. Just a minute. What's the matter, Schweffler? Aren't you prepared? A moment. Oh, you can't think of a question that's easy enough. You were always a numbskull. Candidate, answer this question. How long did the 30 years war last? Sir, uh, I need to say I don't know. Please answer my question. I'm sure you know. Give me an answer. 30 years. 30 years. Mr. Principal, this is no way to run an examination. That fellow is trying to make me cheat. I shall we deal with this decisively. Go away. How long did the 30 years war last? Was that the question? Yes, yes. I know. Exactly seven meters. Ha <laughs> ha! Seven meters. I know it lasted that long. It's possible I'm wrong. And if I am, I fail. Seven meters. <laughs> Seven meters long. Seven meters. Please give me my tuition fees back. Seven meters? Right. Your answer is excellent. What? What did you say? The answer is correct as a matter of fact. Uh, the candidate has shown us that his thought process was not merely superficial, that he has investigated the subject in accordance with modern researchers based on, based on, based uh, on. Uh, relativity, of course, the quantum theory, <laughs> Planck, Einstein. It's all very simple. Don't say another word. We understand perfectly. Einstein has taught us that time is as real as space and matter. 
It consists of atoms, may be synthesized into a unified whole, and may be measured like anything else. Reduce the mass system to a unit, and an ear may be represented by a meter, or seven years by seven meters. We say, even assert that the 30 years war lasted seven years, only because, uh, because, because... Because actual warfare took place only during half of each day. That is to say, 12 hours out of the 24, and the 30 hours at once becomes 15. But not even 15 years were given up to incessant fighting, for the combatants <laughs> had to eat 3 hours a day, reducing our 15 years to 12. And if from this we deduct the hours given up to noonday siestas, to peaceful diversions, to non-war-like activities, to social distractions, we have left only the time which the candidate has represented by the Einsteinian equivalent of 7 meters. Correct? I take it upon myself, gentlemen, uh, to propose of grading of very good in history. Oh. The Bravo! Excellent! Excellent. Yes, pass. Congratulations! <laughs> but I don't see! That ends the examination in history. History? Very good. Now, the examination in physics. Now we'll see something different, you tricksters. Come, come. Well, what's going to happen? Ask your questions, or you don't. I haven't got any more time to waste. Oh, now, I remember you. Do you know what we used to call you behind your back? We called you the cannibal because you were always chewing your thumbs just as you are doing now. <laughs> That's what we called you. Oh, by the way, do you remember the day you tripped and fell flat in the aisle? Do you know who tied a string across from desk to desk? So you do that? I did it. You? Don't get excited, little man. Ask me a hard question. Plummy! Kind of you, very kind of you. Now tell me, her was a call. Do clocks in church steeples really <coughs> become smaller as you walk away from them? Or do they merely, merely appear to become smaller because of an optical illusion? What absolute rot! How should I know? Whenever I walk away from clocks, they get larger. Invariably. If I want them to get smaller, I turn around and walk right up to them and they are not small at all. In a word, therefore, in a word. In a word, therefore, you give me a pain in the neck. You are an ass. That's my answer. Is that your answer? Good. It is correct. A difficult <laughs> answer, but a most brilliant one. I will explain. This is to say, I'll explain, when we talk of the ass, we always know, we always notice. Yes, yes. That this look is sad, therefore, I've got it. What have you got, you whiskered baboon? I've got it. And the answer is right. Why is the look of the ass so sad? Why in general are all of us usually so sad? because we are all the victims of illusion. But what illusions can affect the extremely primitive, perceptive powers of an ass? Obviously, the illusions of the senses, for the, for the ass lacks imaginations, and these must be none other than optical illusions, since the ass, like us, observe that objects appear to become smaller as we move away from them. The candidate has given us the most excellent answers in calling our attention to an animal whose expression is melancholy because its senses are deceptive or to put it another way because the apparent decrease in size of an object, in this case a clock, is to be ascribed to optical illusion. The answer was correct. I certify therefore that the candidate must be given very good in physics. Physics. Very good. Bravo. 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 I protest. And now the examination in geography. Just look at him. 
The old hypocrite. How are you anyway? Nitwit? I beg your pardon. My name used to be in your class book. Didn't it? You old reprobate. You just wait. I'll fix you all right. Tell me, Kanre. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Oh, how I hate. Used to hate you 18 years ago. Please tell me, what city of the same name is the capital of the German province of Brunswick? What a dumb question. The answer is part of the question. Isn't it? And the answer is, what is it? Same, of course. That's the answer. It's the name of the city is the same, then the name of the city is same. Right? If it isn't, I fail. And you refund my tuition <coughs> fees. The answer is correct. The name of the city is same. Gentlemen, the candidate shows exceptional knowledge of the history of the city of Brunswick. There is a legend that once, as the Emperor Barbosa was riding into the city, he met a young peasant girl who was marching a bun and whose mouth was full. He called out to her, God bless you. What's the name of the city? And the peasant girl answered, same to you, sir. Then she stopped because her mouth was full and the emperor laughed and said, ho, ho. So the name of the city is same. And for many years thereafter, he never referred to Brunswick except by that title. The answer is excellent. The candidate is entitled to a grade of excellent in geography. Geography. <laughs> excellent. <laughs> Thus far, the candidate has come through with flying colors. Only the examination in mathematics is left. Should he pass that, he will have passed the entire examination. I, I, I'm going to be more careful now. So, here you are, old stick in the mud. Do you know we used to call you old stick in the mud behind your back? You'd better brush up your wits if you think you're going to put one over me. I'll start off by telling you a few things about mathematics. 2 times 2 is 5 and I make up my own multi ta multiplication tables as I go along. And if you add 8 apples and 2 pears, the answer is 27 apricots. That's my system. And you'll see me use it to hell with mathematics. Answer excellent. Answer very good. Answer correct. Not this time. It will be simpler if you say you aren't prepared and let me fail. You must not joke about a serious examination. I am going to ask you two questions. One of them is easy and the other is hard. One of them is easy, the other is hard. The same old stick in the mud that you always were. I remember the pictures of you we used to draw on the board. If this were an examination in art, you would be marked excellent. But we are dealing with mathematics. The easy question. If we represent the speed of light by x and the distance of the star Sirius from the sun by y, what is the circumference of a 109-sided regular polyhedron whose surface area coincides with that of the hip pocket of a state railway employee whose wife has been deceiving him for two years, 11 months, with a regimental surgeon, age of Hussars. But look here, Professor, Professor. Professor! Don't interfere with him. Will you repeat the question? No. Either you paid attention or you did not. Either you know the answer or you don't. Tell me the answer because if you don't know it... Of course I know it. Naturally I know it. I'll tell you. 2,629 liters. Exact. No fractions. And now, did I give you the correct answer? I've given you the answer which is too good. No. The answer is wrong. The correct answer is 2,628 liters and not 29. I refuse to pass the candidate. Mark him failure. I told you so. I told you so. Professor, Professor, I'm sorry. It is true that his error amounted to less than a tenth of a percent in the total. But it was an error. He fails. My tuition fees. My tuition fees. 
in my opinion, the candidate's request is reasonable. Now that I have satisfied myself, he cannot pass our examination. It is his right to recover the monies which were paid us. That's so. That's right. Give me the money. Is that what you think? Absolutely. This is a good school. It is our duty to see that nothing ever injures its reputation. How much do we owe you? Her Wasakoff? I'll tell you exactly. I attended the school for six years in all. During the first three years, the fee was 150 crowns quarterly. Totally for three years, 1800. During the second three years, the fee was 400 crowns semi-annually. Total, 2400 and 1800 is 4200. Examination fees, 240 crowns. 95 heller. Certificates, documents, books, stamps, taxes, 1, 2, 4, 1 crowns, 43 heller. Total 5,682 crowns, 38 heller. Incidentals, stationery, notebooks, 768 crowns, 12 heller. Grand total 6,450 crowns, 50 heller. Knock off the heller and call it crowns. Exactly. Exactly. You can rely on it. It's right. There's no question of it. It's right to the smallest detail. I congratulate you. That was my difficult question. What? <laughs> I certify that the candidate passes in mathematics. His answer to the easy question was a little out of the way. But his answer to the difficult question, how much the refund should be, was exactly correct. Her Wasakop is really a mathematical genius. So you did put one over me. I present the results of the examination. Her Wasakop has passed with distinction in every subject and is again shown that he is entitled to the certificate we awarded him on his graduation. Her Wasakop, we offer our congratulations accepting a large share of them for ourselves for having taught you so excellently. And now that we have verified your knowledge and your abilities, get out of here before I have you thrown out. So I'm numbs numbskull. Am I saint again? I'll show you what I can do. What I'm, what? I'm a cannibal. What? You were the one who tied a string across the eye? Hypocrite? Nidwit? Ass? Me? All stick in the mud. Yes, sir. Remove that object. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen, for your magnificent cooperation. In the future, it will be our proudest boast that in this school, a pupil simply cannot fail. <laughs> Thank you very much.